Hello everyone, Paul here, uh, and today I'd like to show you how geologists um, use hotspots um, to determine not only the speed of a tectonic plate, but also the direction um, that the tectonic plate is moving. So remember that what a hotspot is, um, is an isolated plume of magma uh, coming up. Uh, it'll burn through the lithosphere uh, and make a volcano on top of it. Uh, but because we live on a planet with plate tectonics, uh, what will happen then is that volcano will get moved off of the hot spot by the movement of the plate and a new volcano will form. And so what this does is it makes you know, a very characteristic pattern um, in this string of volcanoes. And if we look at Hawaii from above, we can see this pattern. First of all, if we look at all the Hawaiian islands, at least the visible ones, um, we can see that there's really only active volcanism, that's the little red triangles, down here on the big island. There's one here. It hasn't erupted in about 200 years, though. So we can, we can concentrate on this, right? If you go up here looking for uh, to see an active volcano you're going to be very disappointed you need to be down here and what's more you kind of need to be down here on the south eastern side of this the other pattern that we see is not just active volcanism at one end of the chain but we also see if we look at the ages of the rocks the rocks get older as we move away from the active volcanism right and so we can see here that you know maui's you know hawaii the big island it erupted two years ago and and it's the most active volcano on the planet so so you know it's erupting essentially now okay uh maui the rocks on maui are about 1.4 million years old molokai is about 1.5 oahu is about three Kauai is about five and uh, Niahu is about 5.2 right and so not only do we have active volcanism only on one end of this island chain but we have increasingly old rocks as we move away from that active volcanism right this is where the hot spot is down here um, and the tectonic plate has, you know, successively shoved each of these islands that used to be active volcanoes off of that hot spot. So let's take a look at how this actually works um, and uh, what we can learn from it. So let's look at it from the side, if we will. And so it looks like this with my silly little animation, right? So here's the tectonic plate. Here's the crust and lithosphere. Um, Here's the hot spot coming up, and then here's a volcano, right, as a result of that hot spot. Now, the trick, though, of course, is that tectonic plate is moving. And let's say it's moving to the left. So what's going to happen is it's going to shove this volcano off the hot spot, and relatively speaking, uh, the hot spot will be over here. Now, the hot spot doesn't actually move, not much anyway, okay? But I'm going to move it, relatively speaking, off there to show how this, this plate has shoved that volcano off the hot spot, right? Once again, hot spot doesn't move, the plate moves, but it's a lot easier for me to move the hot spot in this animation. So, um... So relatively speaking, now the hot spot's over here. This volcano shuts down, new volcano forms, right? Plate continues to move. Now the hot spot's over here. Both of these volcanoes are shut down, new active volcano here. And you can see what we're getting, right? We're getting that pattern of an active volcano at one end and then inactive ones strung out behind it, right? And I've kind of made them smaller because they do. They erode away, they sink, they do generally get smaller as you move away from the hot spot. So here's, here's the thing though, if we think about this, um, this, this volcano or this rock is younger, this rock is older right and so because you know this was the first volcano to form here you know what in about what 45 seconds ago right and then this one is the younger one right it's erupting now it's over the hot spot now um if i draw an arrow from the younger rock to the older rock it goes in that direction right well look that's the same direction the plate is moving so if you're looking at a map of, of a hotspot trace and you draw an arrow from the younger rock 
to the older rock, that will tell you what direction that tectonic plate that's carrying that volcano is moving, right? So if I put up Hawaii again here underneath, um, now I've tilted it, so this isn't due west, <laughs> okay? But you get the idea, right? We have active volcanism on this end, and then progressively older rock as we move this way. If I want to draw a single arrow on here from the younger rock to the older rock, that tells me what direction um, the, the Pacific plate in this case is moving over that hot spot. All right. So if I turn if I if I turn this back up, okay, and I want to draw an arrow, looks like that. Okay. This plus so north is up. So if I draw an arrow from the younger rock to the older rock, that tectonic plate, I wrote it right there, is moving generally to the northwest. Okay. Now, if we were really now, now you might have looked at this and said, wait, 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 wait. You know, those islands are an arc, <laughs> right? They're not, it's not, they're not straight. And indeed you are correct. So, um, you know, if we wanted to, we could do this. Right, we could say, okay, yeah, um, you know, from from you know, 1.4 million years ago till now, the Pacific Plate has been moving a little bit north of northwest, and from five million years ago to 1.4 million years ago, uh, the Pacific Plate was moving more uh, west of northwest, and yeah, right about the time Maui formed, uh, about 1.4 million years ago, the direction that the Pacific Plate was moving in shifted a bit, okay, and you're absolutely right, and so yeah, but, um, but let's, uh, let's work out how fast the plate is moving and to do that we're going to simplify things and we're just going to assume that you know we'll just go with this this direction it, we, we could do it like this it wouldn't honestly make that much difference okay so let's just let's just make a simplifying assumption here uh and let's just let's just do that okay now now um remember that anytime you want to calculate a speed what you're going to do is you're going to take the distance divided by the time, right? That's what speed is. It is distance divided by time. Um, you know, if you think about your own life, if someone asks you how fast you're going, you tell them in miles per hour, right? How far did you go? How long did it take you to get there? That, that's what we want to do, okay? So if we think about Kauai for a second, it is 5 million years old. So, uh, so what that means is 5 million years ago, Kauai was down here over the hot spot. Okay. Another way of thinking about it is it took Kauai 5 million years to go, or I'm um, sorry, yeah, 5 million years to go from here to here. Okay, and we can use that to calculate the speed. Okay, so we need distance and we need time. Okay, so what's the time? Well, the time is, is actually, um, pr I'm sorry, um, the time is actually pretty easy, right? Five million years. Okay, we're going to do it for this island, five million years. So I'm setting up our formula down here, five million years. It took Kauai five million years to go from here to here. Okay, so what's the distance? Well, you've got a scale bar. Now, um, what you can do is quite literally lay a piece of paper against your screen, make a couple of little tick marks on it, and then use that to measure the distance from the hot spot down here to Kauai up here, right? So if we do that, I get 100 kilometers, I get 200 kilometers, I get 300 kilometers, 400 kilometers, 500 we probably want to go to the center of the island um, and so let's go with 600 kilometers okay now I purposely kind of did this kind of kind of manky down here because you know you, we don't you know no one's going to live or die based on our measurement of this distance so don't don't worry if you're like oh my gosh I'm off by 10 or 20 kilometers it's not really going to matter okay so about 600 kilometers and 5 million years, okay? So if I divide those two numbers, I get 120. Now, units are important. What unit is that? Well, it's kilometers 
per million years. Um, that's kind of useless, right? I mean, it, yes, it's a unit, but, you know, it's like parsecs per fortnight. I mean, I don't know if someone asks you how fast you're going and you tell them in kilometers per million years. I don't think that's terribly useful, okay? So what we would like to do is convert that into a more useful unit. And the unit that we generally use for plate tectonic velocities is centimeters per year, Right, you all know how big a centimeter is. It's a little bit bigger than half an inch. Um, and you all know how long a year is because you've lived through a few of them by now. Okay, so now we could go through a long and complicated dimensional analysis to get 120 kilometers per million years into centimeters per year. But I'll do that for you and tell you that all you really need to do is divide by 10. If you divide kilometers per million years, that will give you a speed in centimeters per year. And in this case, you know, just move the decimal one place to the left. That's the same thing. And you get 12 centimeters per year, which is probably about right for the Pacific plate during that time. OK, um, if we were, you know, maybe a little more into this, we might calculate the speed, you know, between Kauai and Maui and then do it again between Maui and now just to see, you know, if not only the direction, but the speed shifted. That might be kind of interesting. Uh, we could do it for every one of these islands and get an average. Um, there's a number of things you can do with this. So anyway, so direction is from the youngest to the oldest, right? So draw an arrow from the youngest rock to the oldest rock. That will give you the direction. The speed, use your scale bar to measure the distance and then divide that distance by the age of, you know, the rock you're measuring to. That'll give it to you in kilometers per million years. Divide that by 10, move the decimal one place to the left to get it into centimeters per year. And there you go. We just calculated the speed and the direction of the Pacific Plate for the last 5 million years based on the ages of the Hawaiian Islands. So, fun stuff. Hawaii is not the only hot spot. There is another one. There's actually a bunch of them. Uh, but one of them up here in Yellowstone National Park uh, in northwestern Wyoming, Montana, Idaho. It's a pretty big, pretty big area with its, you know, springs and geysers. Um, it is a hot spot. Uh, and if we look, you have your exercise involves this map uh, showing um, igneous rocks and their ages. Uh, you can see this is a hotspot trace running across southern Idaho here. Now we don't have active volcano, an active, you know, erupting now volcano on this end. Thankfully, that would be a very powerful, very dangerous volcano. But we do have a series of igneous rocks getting progressively older as we work ourselves away from the the more active, you know, igneous environment that's produced these geysers and springs and things like that so your exercise guides you through what I just did the process of determining the speed and direction of the North American plate over this hot spot uh, for the last 16 million years so there you are um, hot spots and plate tectonics so uh, if you have any questions get with me if I'm not your instructor get with your instructor and y'all take care bye bye